Hello and welcome to Creepy Culture, CM Life's scariest podcast, where we discuss horror movies, video games, music, and more. I'm your host, Stephanie Chipman. And I'm your host, Tyler Clark. And this week, we're going to be talking about horror influence in music. Uh, we're going to discuss various bands and artists that have been influenced by horror and maybe even influenced horror. And uh, before we begin, I'd like to make it clear that if we don't talk about your favorite artist today... Just know that there's just so many artists, and it was a difficult decision to decide who got talked about in the show today. So, I mean, it's so vast horror, like music. There's so many different subgenres, so many different bands. There's no possible way we can get to every single one. So, again, we're very sorry we, if we miss your favorite one. But um, that being said, Stephanie and I are very big fans of rock. Obviously, we're big fans of horror, um, metal, alternative, all that stuff. We listen to a lot of music. There are also a lot of rap artists, hip-hop artists. There are a lot of different artists out there and a lot of different genres who cover horror, who have horror-themed lyrics or horror-inspired music. So we aren't going to talk about any of those genres today, but that's only because of our personal interests. And we chose artists that we thought greatly impacted horror culture and vice versa so that's why we made it the decision that we did and that being said we're going to start at probably like a a pretty early horror influenced music scene um horror punk and uh psycho billy around there uh the cramps that's a band that was um They started off rockabilly, sort of invented, I guess, the term psychobilly, which is sort of like old Elvis-y type era, but with themes of like horror B-movies and scary, they they have the scary blood font dripping, and um, they really sort of started that trend, and then other people took up the torch. they were in the soundtrack for Return of the Living Dead. That soundtrack is actually killer. It has so many good horror punk artists, sort of goth rock era. And um, it would be just horrible if we didn't talk about the Misfits in the horror punk section. Uh, this is one of my favorite bands, Stephanie, a little less, but... Um, I think we both can love the aesthetic of these guys. Well, and and totally agree that they were the first notable band who was doing horror punk. And others before them had been doing that, but they were the first ones that were really big about it and that got really popular. So I definitely can more than recognize and appreciate that. Yes, the singer Glenn Danzig um, took a lot of inspiration from like classic B-movies, like B horror movies, um, the Misfits Walk Among Us album has like so many horror references just on the like front sleeve. It's <laughs> almost every song is based on a horror B movie. It's very good, and their mascot is actually taken from the movie The Crimson Ghost. It's a 1946 movie. They literally just took the horror villain from that movie and s- said, that's, that's our mascot. He was actually had a giant red cloak on, <laughs> but since it's a black and white movie, uh, they substituted it out for like a black cloak later for the Misfits logo. Um, yeah, Glenn Danzig made his own like record label, Plan 9 Records, which was based on Plan 9 from Outer Space, another 50s B-movie. They um, they released the Walk Among Us album in 1982. They got arrested in New Orleans for grave robbing. 
as they were trying to find the voodoo practitioner Marie Laveau. They were trying to dig up her. So definitely a lot of horror influence in these guys. Um, They broke up, and Danzig started his own thing, which he started Samhain, which was still punky, a little bit leaning towards metal a little more, and then Danzig full jumping into metal, which um, Metallica says, like, Danzig and Sam Hain are such a big influence on them. And other um, punk people at the time, sort of um, 45 Grave, uh, they're more goth rock, which is horror punk, but toned down, more melodic, less in your face like other punk bands which sort of leads us into metal yes and um obviously i guess we got to start with black sabbath right yes i would definitely say start with black sabbath uh they're the are unarguably the first band considered to be metal yes that's there's a lot of um back and forth about what's what's considered metal And where do we draw that line? But most people agree that it started with Black Sabbath. And um, it's not only that they started in metal, but they also were some of the first to be associated with the cult, with, um, you know, sinister and heavy theatrics were a big part of their act. Yes, lots of crosses. You don't bite the head off a bat and then no one cares there were a lot of religious groups against them christians specifically and um yes black sabbath had some some really good songs that push some buttons there talking about satan um nib is a good one and uh when ozzy left black sabbath he had his own career as a soloist he didn't let down on the whole satan theatrics the good old satanic panic of the 80s. And when he left Black Sabbath, Dio, Ronnie James Dio, joined. And Dio, all of his stories, all of his songs are just so... Like, it's fantasy with a little bit of, like, religion flair. He's pretty much accepted as the one who started the devil horn sign, the rock on. And um, Kiss, Kiss at the time... You think that, like, they're very childish because a lot of kids had them on their lunchbox and stuff back in the day. In fact, um, you know, my fiance's little brother loves, well, used to really love Kiss, and he's only six. So (laughs) it's funny to think that they were so controversial back then because now, I mean, they're not like that. And And even back then, you know? Yeah, I mean, my dad had, like, Kiss action figures, so... They're, they were a little more accepted, but towards the beginning, with the long tongue, <laughs> putting the devil horns up and spitting blood, it, it rubbed some people the wrong way a little bit during that satanic panic era. Um, Iron Maiden, with their album Number of the Beast. Okay, Iron Maiden had some of the coolest album art. I have to say that. I mean, Dio, for sure, as well. But just just the album art alone gives you a feeling of just total horror and fear. And I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, back in the day, if I were to get one of those, I don't think that my mom would have been been very approval of, would have had, like, um, she probably would not have liked that yes, if I, I showed her that album. <laughs> with the, you know, the skull faces and stuff on it. Jeez. Yes, the one with... Eddie and the devil in hell, and he has them on puppet strings. I love that one. It, it's a very classic album, and they have a lot of songs sort of based around the occult. Um, obviously, Number of the Beast would be one, 666. Um, there were a lot of bands that sort of lent themselves, like leaned into the satanic motifs i guess uh alice cooper he definitely did that with the makeup all a lot of people did makeup back then just horror makeup and and guys wearing makeup i'm sure that's 
even more taboo to the people of the time. Oh, yeah. They didn't like the Satan thing. I don't think they liked men in makeup. It was probably a little weird in the 80s for them. Um, yeah, but I don't know. Androgyny was kind of in. I would say um, maybe not in or just I, maybe they just liked being a little different. Mm-hmm. I mean, stretchy spandex pants, 80s bands. So sexy. <laughs> I don't that's know if the that's the want. word I would use to describe, <laughs> but sure. And then um, later on, we get White Zombie, you know, Rob Zombie, sort of very leaning into horror. That is like top-tier example of someone who loves horror movies and, in fact, directed horror movies later. Uh, his remakes of... Um... Gosh, Texas Chainsaw. Was it or is it Halloween? It was Halloween. Yeah, yes. that remake was decent. I actually enjoyed it. I I was okay with the first one. The second one, a little bit of a miss for me, but his um, House of a Thousand Corpses, mm-hmm. all of those movies. Feels like a long time ago. It sort of was, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit ago. House of a Thousand Corpses. Jeez, um, I'm trying to think. When did that come out? Yeah, but those movies definitely push the boundaries a little bit. He's known for that. His own wife in there posing like pretty much naked next to corpses. And Devil's Rejects, too, oh. came later based on the same story using some of the same actors, actually. And then, um, I think, was it, what is his newest one? The, the Three from Hell or something? I'm not sure. I haven't seen it. I know. Sin. Ah, sorry. <laughs> Too many horror movies, and you know we'll talk about it later on. But there's been a there's been a little lack of good horror movies in the past few years, I would say. Yes, especially remakes. Yeah, I'm really sick of seeing those remakes. Let's let's get some new stuff. Yes, and then Slipknot. Oh yeah, we got to talk about Slipknot. The masks. You know <laughs> the, I love the masks. The theatrics. Um, it. They're they're a master class in freaking people out. Have you seen those interviews? Like, there's one where Corey Taylor's, like, full mask get up, and um, some lady's talking to him, and he randomly, like, yells just an outburst. It's like, okay. They wanted to be seen in a certain way, which worked fantastically for them, like, press-wise. I guess no press is bad press, sort of deal everyone was talking about them parents were saying don't listen to them which kids would go oh i want to listen to them now so that was pretty perfect for them gosh and um i was just thinking about how they were anonymous for a while yes and what does that mean as far as how do they feel about themselves and the image that they portray i mean this is they they knew that they were going to get backlash, obviously. Yeah. And they wore the mask to hide their identity and create a new identity for themselves. So obviously everyone knows Corey Taylor, but I'm sure it was complicated. Yeah, yeah. I don't know the specifics about when their identity, like when they just came out and said it. Because they used to go by like the numbers, but yeah, I don't remember that. I mean, it's obviously, you know, when you get that big and you're doing something that's so dark and aggressive and horror forward, I just think that you don't want people to know who you are because you don't want to get judged or threatened. I imagine there are people out there that have sent death threats over that. Oh, for sure. Also, just a sense of privacy that you don't get when you're just like a normal rock star. It's just they they were involved in a lot of taboo behavior yes that is very true and i don't see anything wrong with that i think that kids need that to an extent yes they need to experiment with whatever they're interested in and obviously we were both into very dark things when we were younger yes (laughs) and um, obviously my dad a led zeppelin fan was totally fine with it but some other parents aren't as cool i guess that is true. I mean, I grew up with Iron Maiden, loving the the Satan on the front of that vinyl. It. 
You very said you different. loved Satan. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I grew up loving Satan. Come on. And I mean, like, misfits. They call him Evil Elvis because he sings like Elvis. That's so good. Come on. That's evil. not anything horrible. No, and it's not evil in the sense that they're going out and murdering people. It's just, I think as humans, we have a fascination with the morbid, that we like dark things. Not that we want bad things to happen to us, but that we like the thought of it, as long as we're within safety. Just like Professor Allman was talking about last week, that we just, we have a fascination with that kind of thing. And maybe not for everybody, but I think quite a few people are at least interested yeah that is definitely the case i mean people will always be drawn to dark things um i just think human nature (laughs) if it seems like we shouldn't watch it shouldn't listen to it we want to listen to it and watch it more i agree and you know i i think i started watching horror movies really young and listening to dark music really young but I don't I don't think I realized that it was about Satan or it was about super gory things I think I just liked the intensity of the music and you know that goes plays back into why we've talked about rock and metal so much um I have this Alice Cooper quote um that says Jason Voorhees and Michael Myers sort of happened at the same time as metal did If you saw an action scene with Jason and Freddy Krueger fighting, it certainly wasn't going to be set to violin music. And I agree to that. I think that that intensity of metal is why it goes so well with horror. Yeah, I agree completely. I mean, (laughs) Rob Zombie's remake, the music in it, is good. It's great. It fits well. I really enjoy it. And uh, I talked about Return of the Living Dead. That was when horror punk was at its peak, pretty much, around there, give or take. And, um, yeah, I mean, it fit the movie perfectly. That that movie is goofy. We're going to have to watch that at some point, because that's the one where on the front cover there's like a... Um, a zombie punk. He's got like the mohawk, he's got the leather jacket... So good. So goofy. You're going to have to show that one to me. I've not seen that one yet. Yes. I definitely recommend go listen to that album. It's got just a really good mix of old horror-inspired music. Um, I, I guess we should move on to modern horror music then. Yes. This is where you really shine. Your expertise really comes in. I'm more of a, an 80s music kid. I'm I'm a former emo kid, as I think uh, it's formally called. Uh, so I definitely grew up with the changing music, the changing metal scene. I don't think I realized what it came from when I was younger, but I think I do now more. Um, and we got to talk about some of like the bigger names, some of the older bands. So I'm definitely going to talk about Avenged Sevenfold first. Um, there's such an important band to the genre in general. And I know that some people call it Metal Nickelback um, is it's one of the Avenged Sevenfold nicknames. But I disagree. I don't think that they're just being generic. I, there's a lot of originality from Avenged Sevenfold. And A Little Piece of Heaven is definitely part of that. Um, longest song that I think I've heard from Avenged Sevenfold um, but it's a story-based song, and I don't think a lot of other, their other songs are like that. Have you heard A Little Piece of Heaven? I have heard a bit of it. Again, I, I, don't, I haven't listened to them that much. I did listen to their Misfits cover. Oh, of, they okay. covered hybrid moments. So that's sort of how they hit my radar. I wasn't, I don't know, I was listening to Iron Maiden when I was in middle school, which I guess sort of abnormal for most middle schoolers but hey i i was quirky and different oh yeah well i'm I'm glad that you have because i feel like we even each other out a little bit here yes uh me with the more modern stuff but i did like old punk like the ramones and the sex pistols kind of like the beginnings but 
definitely evolved over time. Um, but yeah, a little piece of heaven is very spooky. It's, um, it's about, I hesitate to say what it's about because it's a little horrible, but it's about a guy killing his girlfriend, basically, and then her coming from the dead and killing him back. Hey. (laughs) And there's some, uh, there's some little racier parts in there, but you know, if you want to know, listen to the song. It's worth it. Um, it's actually pretty cool. There's some like cool musical elements to that song. It's a really fast paced. It has, um, five beats per minute instead of four Not beats per minute, but you know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit of a faster paced song, um, really great animation for it. But Avenged Sevenfold's had a lot of other really good songs as well about that are more horror based. They have an entire album called Nightmare. <laughs> if you can imagine how evil that would be. We got a little uh, devil reaper on the front. Have you heard Nightmare? I have not. You're killing me, Smalls. I know, I know. Hey, I didn't bring up Misfits, like... Okay, fine. (laughs) That's fair. That's fair. Like you said, we even each other out. This is your expertise. I'm letting... I'm learning from the master. Well, I know you do know quite a bit about Ghost. I do know a bit about Ghost. We both really like Ghost. That is... A fantastic band. I'm seeing them later this year. Later this concert. month. This month. Oh my gosh. It's February. It is February. I really wanted to go to this concert, so I'm really jealous of Tyler. Hey, there's still tickets. They're so probably. expensive, Tyler. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't. You don't even know. They're so expensive. They are. Um, but yeah, they are playing in Michigan, Grand Rapids, I believe. Yes. Um, later this month great band um very spooky and they're not i would hesitate to to say they're not they're not traditional metal they don't have like a heavy singer their riffs are metal they're Mm -hmm. backing like the guitar bass drums that's metal the singer has a very different voice he's very high pitch sort of ethereal voice i would say yeah, it's almost like he's preaching. It's like he's part of a choir. There's like that is why he wears his pope robes. His there is those priestly religious, robes. There's those religious sounds to it. Without even being told that it's religious themes, you hear it in the music. You feel it. There is this like preachy, ominous sound to it. I I initially was like not interested in Ghost. But they grew, grew on me over time, and From the Pinnacle to the Pit got me, that song. Yes, by far my favorite song. We've talked about this at great length. But, um, yeah, they, they were very different. They're very different. Um, I would say if you listen to them the first time and you don't like them, give it a bit. It is sort of an acquired taste sometimes. Um, You'll find the same thing with Iron Maiden, the singer. He's a little divisive sometimes. Uh, Bruce Dickinson, not the original singer. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get into someone. And Ghost is definitely that, but it is worth it. I would for sure say take that dive. Go all the way through their albums. Satanic Panic. If you didn't think they belong on this episode, they definitely do. They have an album called Satanic Panic, so... Come on. It is on the nose. Oh, yeah. And they, like you said, they dress in, like, Pope robes. In fact, um, the first time I heard of Ghost, one of my friends went to go see uh, Avenged Sevenfold, and they opened for them. And this was quite a few years ago now, but I remember she told me that they kind of freaked her out because of their theatrics. Because they do wear those skull-like masks and those full robes. They she said there was fire and everything, so I can imagine you're going to have quite a good show. Oh, and yeah. one of the few um, modern horror bands that still do stuff like that, it's not really it's not really popular anymore. I mean, obviously Ghost is pulling it off, but I don't feel like a lot of bands currently do that. Well, a lot of the big metal bands are sort of slowing down reaching the end and there isn't anyone taking up the mantle who is as popular as they were like iron maiden 
their shows so theatrical. They have giant inflatables. Um, I think it was like the Book of Souls tour. They had a giant inflatable like devil Eddie that came up and then they blew him up. Stuff like that. I, I feel like you don't go to, I don't know, a modern concert and see that. I don't know if Taylor Swift is shooting at the devil with a flamethrower, although that would be hysterical. Um, but um, that, that does remind me of Guar. I think that that's... They're probably the only band that I've seen live that actually, like, full-on shocked me. Like, Ghost shocked my friend. Um, a friend of mine asked me to go see them when we were at Warp Tour because I was going to leave early. You know how it is. Um, apparently, all their fans dress in white because um, Guar likes to pour blood all over their fans. Oh, my gosh. Well, spray blood from various orifices, apparently. That is um, amazing. Yeah, there's uh, there were some decapitations that happened on stage. It was... I was less listening to the music and more paying attention to what they were doing because their costumes were insane. Because I'd hesitate to even call them costumes. I mean, they were. it was almost like full body special effects in, in a way. It was shocking. I wish you could have been there. That does sound like a fun concert. Yeah, anytime you're getting blood sprayed all over you. Come on, that's a good time. It was, I, I was, I was just surprised at how much the fans loved it. I <laughs> loved it. But yeah, I mean, I think theatrics have really died down in the past few years. And um, gosh, My Chemical Romance, you wouldn't consider them to be a horror band, but would you go? A little bit. The themes, um, I mean, Black Parade, that whole sort of aesthetic there could be horror related. I know um, the singer is, like, he's gone, come out and said that he really appreciated the Misfits, which are horror-related, horror-inspired. Um, in fact, they're playing at Riot Fest, I think, later this year. I don't know. I, I It got canceled for a second, and it got uncanceled. But the Misfits and My Chemical Romance at a festival together... That sounds wild. I would love to go to that. But um, some of those more, I'm going to say it, emo <laughs> bands, um, I think they sort of fall into the horror category, horror-inspired, horror shoot-off. <laughs> definitely horror-inspired. I mean, if you think about Welcome to the Black Parade, they were wearing almost skeletal-like costumes. They were... Gerard dyed his hair white. I mean, I feel like there was horror themes there. And gosh, one of my favorite My Chem songs would be Dead, which is a very aggressive song, a very sp scary song in a way. Um, <laughs> it's a very like revenge payback kind of thing. Yes. And um, I'll keep bringing it back to Misfits because you know I love Misfits. Let's do it. Let's bring it back to Misfits. They did a cover of Astro Zombies by the Misfits. Um, I think it was for one of the Tony Hawk games. But it is a great cover. It is like weird emo Misfits, and I kind of dig it. Um, so horror-inspired for sure. A lot of those emo bands. Um Ah, I'm trying to think who they are. The Why Do Good Girls Like Bad Guys. Wh what is that band? Why am I blanking? I don't know. Yeah, you can I look had them. them. Um, gosh, it's funny that um, I think a lot of people that, you know, grew up in the same scene that I did, they associate My Chemical Romance with Fall Out Boy and Panic at the Disco. And that's just, My Chem is so much more darker than those bands. I mean, come on. Are you kidding me? Yes, I was thinking of Falling in Reverse. They oh, just put out God. a song, Zombified. And that music video actually has like a, a lot of cool effects. Like the zombies in there, kind of cool. Um, Falling in Reverse, I didn't really get into it. 
I had some friends get super duper into it. Uh, I mean, it was a little too emo for me. I was more metal. But, um, I mean, they, they're definitely sort of metal. I don't want to step on anyone's toes here. So, um... I think they call it metalcore. Metalcore. Or, um, and I'm not... I actually do really like Falling in Reverse's uh, music. I'm not the biggest fan of their lead singer because, you know, he has a lot of allegations against him. Yeah, that, um, that's going around a lot now. I mean, he was... It, this was quite a long time ago, and um, he, he went to jail for beating his girlfriend. Um, so, yeah, that's how he... He was in Escape the Fate, and then he went to jail, and they kicked him out, and then he made... Um, he got Falling in Reverse together, and they're still together. And they do make good music, but sometimes you don't want to listen to music of people who do shitty things. Yeah, that is true. There's such a big debate about, like, separate the artist from the art, and I don't think we're qualified to talk about that, really. No. But that is a gigantic debate with a lot of people. But back to horror... You sort of took the deep dive in Ice Nine Kills recently. I was doing research for this episode. <laughs> research. We'll, we'll call it research. Yeah, because I barely scratched the surface before diving headfirst into Ice Nine Kills and not moving from that spot because apparently they're my new favorite band. I guess. I mean, I'd, I'd listen to a little bit of them. Um I have a neighbor who loves them to death and is constantly trying to get me to listen to them, but I just never really gave them a chance. Definitely after this, I will have to, but I, I, I've i had a few of their songs and playlists here and there, but um, yeah, they're very horror-inspired. They have like whole albums for 80s horror movies and all that. Yeah, I mean, that was really cool. The The Silver Scream is the name of their first, oh. the first album that they did for um, horror movies. And there's, it's just fun to listen to because I can't pinpoint all of the movies that they're trying to get at. But there's one for Friday the 13th. There's one for Halloween, for Jaws. And they're really intense and spooky. And sometimes they use clips from the movie. So very, very, like, horror movie inspired directly i think that that's where their a lot of their focus is is on the movies directly not just horror in general but really cool band to look to listen to and took way too long to find them for me and i come back to them but yeah ice nine kills really horror inspired definitely suggest those guys the silver scream or um gosh their newest their newer one uh welcome to horrorland the silver scream 2 Oh, uh, now they're doing the sequels. Yeah, I mean, it's the perfect sequel name, too. It's so long. Oh, you know how some of those movies are? But, um, it's, you know, obviously they're more horror movie-based, whereas um, bands like Rings of Saturn are still very, very focused on the devil and Satan and Satanism. I know you're not familiar. Yeah, uh, I mean... The devil, sure. Oh, not yeah. The band. <laughs> Direct contact with the devil. Of course. Um, no, Rings of Saturn is a very, very heavy band, and I hesitate to even guess what genre they're part of because it's almost, like, cosmic-themed. They have a lot of, like, galaxy-themed, like, covers and stuff. But very spooky, dark, heavy band. Um, but a little bit modern, too, me mentioning outer space and stuff like that. But... Never before have I seen such Satanism-driven lyrics. You know what uh, us two ghost fans forgot to mention? What? Their new song. Their new song. Oh, my gosh. So, um, what is the name of the song? Call Me Sunshine? Call Me Little Sunshine. Little Sunshine. Sorry. It came out two weeks ago. Um, we From were recording. Yes. We, we were totally behind on this discovery of their newest song. It jump scared me. I had no clue it was coming. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did. But um, what is it? It's going to be on the same album as their last single. Hunter's Moon. Hunter's Moon. That one was yes. for the Halloween movie, Halloween Kills. Oh, really? Yes. I didn't know that. It was made for that movie 
as a single. But, um, I mean, the movie was not great. The song was good. Well, that, yeah, it is a very good song. I, I enjoyed it. Redeems the movie slightly for me, but, ah, I mean, we'll get into that when we're talking about remakes, new movies, dragging old movies back from the dead. Right. Sorry, I got distracted by the train. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what the frick is that? Is that a ghost? Is there something in the wall? Spooky. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, li- I liked the new song. It was good. It was an O from the pinnacle to the pit, but it was good. Yes. Um, hopefully the rest of the album is a little more heavy, because that one was not quite as heavy as things that have come before. And I was, um, I, I, I'm going to butcher some names here, pre-warning, but um, Prequel was not as heavy as I wanted it to be. So I'm having high ho- higher hopes for this new album. I'm definitely more into the heavier stuff. Yeah. I did like Rats. Rats is a good song. I, I know it's like a single. And it's on the radio all the time, but it was one of the heaviest songs. Oh, right. Um, Faith. Faith was the, my favorite song off that album and the heaviest song on the album, in my opinion. Do you remember which one I'm talking about? Vaguely. Ghost for me sometimes melds together some of their songs because I just listen to it on shuffle and it's like just an earful of ghosts. See, that's okay. That's where I'm going to draw the line, Tyler. I think that when you listen to an album, you should listen, listen to it the way that God intended. The way the devil intended. The way, the way the way Satan intended. From the first song to the last song, in order. That's how they intended for you to listen to it. I know, I know. But sometimes my little ADHD brain can't do that, and I have to just go through songs, skip around a little bit in the song, add it to a playlist, and keep going. You know, honestly, I'm glad you have vinyl, because that, that way it I, forces you to listen to it the way the devil intended. That is why I bought intended. vinyl. Because I need to do that. I listened to Iron Maiden, Number of the Beast for like the first time all the way through on vinyl. I was like, huh, that was a different experience entirely. I didn't just listen to Run to the Hills and Hallowed Be Thy Name. Well, once, you, once you've listened to it so many times in a row, then you know which songs you're going to skip. Yes, that is true. Um, and I feel like that's how you find some of the lesser-known songs that you might love, but other people might not. Um, Again, that Iron Maiden album, I... Children of the Damned is one of my favorite songs now. I never really gave it a chance because it was slower when I was younger. I was like, ah, it's got to keep moving. I got to keep going. But really good song. Um, Good album, (laughs) honestly. I firmly believe that, like, if you're listening to an album for the first time and you listen to it the way it was meant to be listened to, then you'll always be like, oh, this is this is the best song on the album, and it'll usually be a single. But when you've listened to it quite a few times through, then you'll realize that there's, like, a goal, a piece of gold in that album that is not appreciated. And it is not a, it's never a single. You can call me wrong, but I just think that you're wrong. Hey, I didn't even disagree with you. <laughs> no, I just that I firmly believe that that there is there's always those little those songs that are just not appreciated enough. That is true. That there are so many of those on so many albums. Um I'm trying to think. I, I just keep thinking of like my favorite band, The Amity Affliction. Um I love their song Forest Fire, and it is not a single. It's not It's not even like a song that people regularly talk about, but it's my favorite song from them. And I don't think I would have appreciated it if I hadn't listened to the album a million times. That is fair. They're kind of horror themed, but not really. I mean, yeah, I I have some of those. Like um, there's one from the Misfits box set. It's not even like a song that was released on an album. Uh, Spook City, USA. I was like, that is just a Halloween song. Come on. That is perfect. 
I had never heard it until I like went through the whole box set. Great song. I don't think anyone really knows about it or cares. <laughs> it's like my favorite Mitzvah song, Teenagers from Mars. Oh, yeah? It's not even a single. People don't even know about that song. <laughs> You're just talking from nowhere, huh? I got this album sitting in front of me with all these song names on it. Said anyone on that album, you're probably good. <laughs> really? I made out good here? Pretty much. Oh, it's geez. a good song. I should definitely listen to it probably then since you it's my favorite. You should listen to The Misfits. I gave you homework and you listen to Ice Nine Kills. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> They're just too good. They are. They're really good. I couldn't, as soon as I listened to The Silver Scream, I was like, this is my new album. <laughs> It just, like, moved my dinosaur life, my, my Motion City soundtrack, right out of the way and was like, this is your new album. Yeah, I mean, I got in, I did a lot of research on the horror punk aspect and started listening to some. And I was like, okay, why is Return of the Living Dead so good? Why is that weird film soundtrack so freaking good? And then that sort of took over my listening experience for the past week so you got stuck in the same trap as i did yeah yeah it's got different artists on it okay it's a soundtrack Mm -hmm. it's different there's a lot of featured artists on the album that (laughs) i've been listening to but i i think that really puts in perspective that we are both album people and i've met a lot of people that are very like individual song based yeah i'm sure maybe some of you are as well that prefer to like just listen to single songs you might not even know who the artist is but um tyler and i are definitely album people (laughs) yes i am vinyl collector i like the album even if it's just like the art sometimes i'll just buy a vinyl if it looks cool and in my case (laughs) satany if it looks satany enough i'll collect ah that one's not I like the music, but it's not Satan enough. I think I'm going to put it back. I, I'm a CD collector, actually. Ooh. Even though the CD player in my car doesn't work anymore, I have a huge CD collection. Big fan. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, CDs. I, I mean, obviously Spotify, sort of the way to go in most aspects. But it is fun to collect things. I have a Spotify premium. I know. <laughs> and we might put up a playlist with some of the songs that we've talked about and some of the artists. Um, it'll probably be Stephanie's Spotify. So definitely go to Creepy Culture on Instagram and uh, we'll post something with the link. And that's creepy culture with double K's. Yes. I have to make that very clear. Um, Because there's been some confusion. Both begin with a K. And that's um, sort of a Killer Clowns from Outer Space reference almost. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Because you love that movie. Yeah. It's a cute movie. (laughs) I say cute because, like, I don't know. There's some weird scenes in it that just, like, I don't know. You're just like, oh, that's it's, it's kind of playful and cute and it's weird. It's not like, oh my gosh, I'm going to not sleep for a week after watching this movie. No. It's more like 80s, almost comical. <laughs> He's got the little boxing go- gloves. Bah, they're just not as scary as like Stephen King's It. You know, they're not oh, yeah. to that level t- for me. But yeah, we should, we should probably talk about... Music, not movies. That is true. We get we get very sidetracked, obviously. But um, a band that I um, didn't initially think about when we were talking about doing this episode, but kind of came up, was Bring Me the Horizon, which they're definitely an ever-changing entity in my eyes. They have gone through so many different genres in the past few years, but initially they were very, very heavy. Um, they were like cannibal corpse that are more just like you can't under even understand what they're saying (laughs) but you can enjoy those like beats and like catch a word now and then and um but yeah they one of their first one of their really early songs that i feel like is particularly evil 
is um, a prayer for plagues. Prayer for plague? Yeah. Jeez. Been a long time. Pray for plagues. Jeez. I'm bad. 2006. It was a long time ago, to be, to be fair. The music video is terrifying. And even like songs like Alligator Blood. Very spooky song. And, you know, you hesitate to say, oh, is that horror? And we, you know, Tyler and I talked about that. What what counts as, like, a horror song? What counts as a horror band? You know, we, we got horror punk, but it's not like, it's not like we have, like, a metal version of that. We got horror metal, metal core. Yeah, I mean, there's, like, black metal. Me- How many forms of metal are there? So many. Black metal. Uh, black metal, yeah. I mean, we could just. Grindcore. Cut to some Norwegians in the woods screaming. Post-hardcore. Yeah. Um, there's quite a few different, and, you know, I'm, I'm saying post-hardcore like it's metal, but I don't know what else you'd call it. And as I said before, there's a lot of back and forth about what counts as metal and how many different forms of metal there are. So we're not really going to get into that, but. Also, some of it is goth, goth rock, goth metal. And I'm afraid to even touch that. Some some of the goth community, they hold on to that very tightly. What is goth music? Oh, Which we... is sort of influenced by horror themes. Have you ever met a goth person that isn't influenced by horror themes? Exactly. I, I have never met that person. But, um, you know, I think goth kind of turned into emo. And, you know, where's the line between goth and emo? I don't know. And then we're straying even further from horror roots. So everything's sort of connected. I mean, I'm sure there's some strange country horror band that's still doing Psycho Billy somewhere. Please, please point me in the direction of this band. I have to see. I know. That sounds amazing. And, And horror rap. You know, we talked about that earlier, but that actually sounds really interesting. Yes, so please comment. Uh, go to our Instagram page, put a comment on the episode post whenever this comes out next Friday. Um, tell us bands that you want us to listen to. Educate us. Yeah, send a, send me a horror horror rap band. I really want to hear it. I, I, I gotta know. But, um... Back to Bring Me the Horizon, older band, 2006. Not older, but for the scene, I guess. Um, Drown, spooky song. But um, their newest album from 2020, Post-Human Survival Horror. Is, that, is there anything less like scary than saying horror in the title of your album? So, not a band that I would have thought about initially, but thinking back about alligator blood and pray for plagues i i should have thought of them right yes they they do definitely have a lot of influence from horror hey, what do you know bring me the horizon are you familiar a little bit them more so than some of the other ones but not enough to where i think i can talk and not say something dumb <laughs> you're good you're good it's, they're not Ollie Sykes, he's a, he's a wild person, their lead singer, crazy guy. Now, I wouldn't say crazy, but I think that he likes to put off the, like, idea that he is a little yes. bit. Play but a little bit of cool. a character. Lots of tattoos. That guy is tatted up. And even on his face, he has face tattoos. Not like um, Post Malone face <laughs> tattoos, but... Different. Yeah. Um, but yeah, crazy band. Um I know I wanted to talk a little bit about Architects. And I've I've gone back and forth about talking about them because are they horror? Maybe, maybe not. But they definitely tie into the Satanist um, theme that we've been kind of going along with here. And I wouldn't necessarily call them Satanists, but they definitely are... They have religious beliefs of their own. And they definitely are not Christian beliefs. And they talk pretty negatively about some religions in particular. Not, I wouldn't say negatively. I would say critically, um, pointing out mistakes and things like that. So I, I do believe that architects should be talked about in this aspect, as far as being criticized and critical 
of religion in general. And, you know, they don't talk about the devil, but some 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 of that effect. Yeah. And um, very heavy, very heavy music. Very dark, inspired um, album covers and things like that. Not necessarily satanic inspired like ghost but interesting band they were my number one for last year <laughs> on spotify leave in the comments who your number one was i think mine was misfits i was in the top one percent of architects listeners oh my gosh yeah die top, hard fan over here top one percent oh my, my top gosh. song was animals and now it's gonna be ice nine kills and i i just yeah probably <laughs> i just want to say that like architects newest album was really really good even if some people that i work with don't think that not you tyler but other people okay throwing a little bit of shade throwing a little bit of shade and you know they know who they are talking about new music um muse i don't know if you're familiar with them oh who doesn't know muse okay all right there are some people you'd be surprised super massive black hole i I great song think about vampires their newest song, um, the video for it, is very, like, horror-esque. What happens? He looks very creepy. It's, like, very weird effects. Um, and he's got, like, things protruding from his fingers that are, like, connected with wires. And he sort of puppet masters a group full of people that are all, like, faceless. And That's so spooky. The new song... Their new song is very heavy, or not very heavy, heavy for Muse, in my opinion. Ooh, I got to listen to it now. You yes. so, You sold me. Uh, it's won't heavy, stand I'm down. Won't stand down, okay. Yeah, a lot of the metal community is sort of like, oh, Muse has riffs? What? Okay. That's wild. I thought they were just in Twilight that one time. <laughs> yes, and they um, they used to have a little more metal stuff, but now... Since their last one, they were more 80s synth. Now they're leaning more towards metal. A little twinge of horror aesthetic in the video is very cool. I definitely think there's there's just so many other bands that we could talk about, too, and so many other artists that I wanted to talk about. But it's tough because Tyler and I did draw a line of what is considered horror and not. And there's only so many we can know. That's true. Like, without just being a savant and knowing all and well and that's the thing is that we're not jack of all trades we're not we don't know every single artist because we listen to the same albums on repeat that is true that is a classic personality trait um of me definitely i don't know about you but yeah that's probably true It, it takes me like a couple months to get over listening to one album over and over and over again yeah uh, Black Sabbath, Master of Reality. I listened to that album so many times this year. No particular reason. Just love that album. Just couldn't put it down. I was like, should I listen to something? No, nothing else. It's that one. Yeah, it's like I said, Silver Scream. That's my newest album. <laughs> you'll be listening to it for like a month. Yeah, And then I you'll mean, find something else. It was like uh, My Dinosaur Life. My Motion City soundtrack was my... Um... My go-to, which is very pop punk. I don't know if you're into pop punk, but... A little bit. It's really good. It's just... It's right there for me. But I definitely... Going back to listening to heavier stuff, just... I love that feeling. It just gives you that feeling of intensity and... I don't know. Wanting to be different. I think people look at me weird when they, like, kind of hear my music when I walk by, and I'm like... Yeah. that That's fair. I don't know. Hopefully you'll have a new album to listen to in the form of Ghost. I'm so excited. I don't know exactly when that album comes out, but I hope it's everything everything I want it to be. All the good metal riffs, just very heavy with his ethereal voice, just, well, ghostly voice. And I, I do want to, you know, give a shout out to my future father-in-law who got me into Ghost by... Making um, all of us listen to Mela Ora on um, repeat. Forever. <laughs> I didn't even realize which songs were which. I thought the whole thing was just, like, together. I couldn't, like, pick out the individual songs. 
for the longest time. But if it hadn't been if it hadn't been for Mike, I would not be into Ghost, and I appreciate him for that. All right, it does say March eleventh. That's when it's coming out. Yes. Oh my god. We're so close. <sighs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Just preparing yourself. Uh, yes. Yes. It's been a while since I've been this excited for an album. Maybe Amity's last album. You'd lock yourself in a room and just listen to the album on repeat? I get like that. Like, if I really like an artist, I really do want to, like, if I'm going to listen to a song for the first time, I'm going to listen to it with my headphones on by myself and where I have plenty of time so that I can enjoy it 100%. Because you can't, you can't unlisten to a song for the first time. That is true. I'm just saying and I, maybe it's a little bit too, like, worshipy to do stuff like that, but... You lock yourself in the cellar with the candle and the... the candle. You have a glass of wine. Yeah, like that candelabra. Yeah. But um, that's all we had to talk about today for music. But um, Tyler and I wanted to give you some suggestions in the form of the final kill. The final kill. <laughs> um, you can start if you want. All right, my final kill for this episode, I'm going to recommend the Misfits album, Walk Among Us. Um, that is my favorite album of theirs, which some disagree, some say that there's other albums that are better, but this is my personal favorite, and my favorite song on there is Astro Zombies. I'm looking at it right now. It's such a good song. It's got... <laughs> A song literally called Night of the Living Dead. So good. Good uh, art as well. Yeah, the art is really cute. So, I shouldn't so say many, cute. Uh, not quite cute, but... Um, to be fair, it is pink. It is pink. It's a good color. I love pink. Exactly. Anyone can rock pink. And the um, there are a lot of like B-movie, like the flying saucer, the alien there. Um, those are from B movies from like the fifties and sixties. So very horror inspired, very good album. Um, Astro Zombies takes inspiration from a movie called Astro Zombies. Great. Could you even get any better than Astro Zombies? I know. I love the space callbacks, like uh, Rings of Saturn. Love the space themed stuff. Space can be scary. I mean, Alien. Yeah, Alien. Jeez, yeah, we talked about that last episode. We did, right? Yes. Okay. Um, so for my personal recommendation, or my final kill, I was going to go with a ghost song, but I think we pushed ghost a- enough. So um, I'm going to suggest Ice Nine Kills, um, Thank God It's Friday. That was That was the one on the album that I was like, it's probably a single, and I really love it. I'll let you know later on what my um my unpopular opinion is. Is that the silver screen? The silver scream. scream. Sorry, scream. The silver scream. Okay. <laughs> really pushing it in there. Oh, you love it. Yes. You know it's great. But yeah, that song oh, it was just so good. And they put some lines from the movie in there. And it's just mm, so good. But they have songs that are based off The Shining and Jaws in there as well. So. And again, yeah. I, if I remember... We'll make a pot or a um, a playlist rather of some of the songs that we talked about in this, just to kind of give you guys a taste. Yeah, and uh, check it out. See what you like. See if you like the older stuff or the more modern stuff. Um, yeah, check it out. Um, so thank you so much for joining us for our discussion today of horror music. I guess I, I hesitate to call it horror, but um, horror, metal, rock, dark-themed music. Uh, yeah. Yes, and don't forget to join us next Friday when we dive into horror icons. And also don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Creepy Culture. That is two Ks. Creepy Culture. Creepy underscore culture. That is true. And don't say you'll be right back, because this is a horror movie, baby, and you know you won't be back. Come on. I'll be right back. Ha 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 ha.